independence referendum in 2014, I didn't think that the moral authority lay with the national campaign. My name is Tom Morton. I'm a writer and broadcaster, sometime journalist, former light entertainer. Worked for the BBC for about 20 years with a daily music and chat show and retired about two years ago after a small heart incident. I think my feelings about the independence referendum in 2014 were basically about the morality of nationalism and what we mean by nationalism and why it has any moral power. And I felt at the time that it lacked moral authority because what I feel nationalism needs is a sense of actually working for the good of the poor and of the majority of the people in the country it supposedly represents. And I think what we had then was no real sense of being oppressed. The history of nationalism is all about fighting against oppression, actually self-realising a country because another country, a bigger country, has oppressed it. And I didn't think that was the case in 2014. I didn't think that the moral authority lay with the national campaign because for me the main moral impetus in politics has always been working for the poor and the rights of the underprivileged. And for me the Labour Party was always the party of the underprivileged and the poor. What has happened since 2014 is that I believe the Labour Party has abandoned that representation, has forfeited the right to be considered the party of the poor, is completely in meltdown in Scotland. And what we also have in Scotland, because of Brexit and because we now face the possibility of a Tory party in power for all eternity, is that sense of moral authority for nationalism in Scotland because an independent Scotland would have the moral ability to stand for the poor and to stand for, if you like, the forces of good in politics. There were two uh, stages in my disillusion with the Labour Party. The first one, curiously enough, was to do with alcohol. And that happened because of the Scottish Government's policy on minimum pricing for alcohol, which was opposed by the Labour Party. And it became evident that the Labour Party there was in the hands of the alcohol industry. I felt that that was a totally justified and absolutely correct thing for the Scottish Government to do. And then there was the whole business of Brexit. And Brexit to me was just unbelievable in the sense that the Labour Party refused to engage with it in any meaningful and cohesive way and I think also the Corbyn leadership has been an utter disaster for not just for the Labour Party as a whole in the UK but particularly for the Labour Party in Scotland. Brexit for me is crucial because for me my inheritance if you like that I can pass on to my children and my grandchildren is to be part of Europe. I don't see uh, myself as a little Britain f person or, or, you know, I, I despair at the thought of my children and grandchildren not being part of a Europe uh, where, you know, there are no borders and where we can actually work together, apart from anything else, for a peaceful Europe and a peaceful world. So. Um, for me, Brexit was the absolute killer app, if you like. And the idea that we were now in thrall to a Westminster government, which was going to, first of all, oppose immigration in such a brutal and right-wing fashion and take us out of Europe without any thought for the, really, for the implications other than some spurious post-colonial nationalist notion of what Britain means. That, to me, seemed completely anathema. And the offering from the Scottish National Party seemed reasonable. Uh, it looked to me to be about 
a broad church which would offer the possibility of working for the rights of the poor and for social justice and it seemed like the right way to go. I don't think anyone should be under any illusion about how difficult this is going to be. I think it's important to recognise that this will not be some romantic fantasy. And I think it's also important to understand that we're not talking about the Tartan army here. We can't glorify in defeat. We can't take refuge in the idea of being really nice Scottish people who didn't win the next independence referendum. Because if the next independence referendum is lost, and uh, the no side triumphs, that's the game over for at least a decade. So there's no point in rushing into this, it's got to be planned properly, there's got to be serious strategic thinking and I don't believe that that can be done quickly. So it's got to be at least two years before the next independence referendum and it has got to be one. I will be voting yes.